Hi everyone, it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel. Today's video I'm going to show you how to crochet a nice big super chunky pumpkin. They're super easy to make and they stitch up super fast because we are using this six super bulky yarn. We'll talk more about the yarn in just a few minutes. Now this pumpkin measures about 10 inches tall and about 30 inches around. So it's a nice size pumpkin to maybe set on your step or just decorate through the fall holidays. Isn't that super cute? Now I wanted to call it the super chunkin' pumpkin, but I just thought that wasn't cute enough for this super chunky pumpkin. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? I just love it. And you can find the free crochet pattern on my blog, and I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. To make a super chunky pumpkin, you're going to need some super bulky yarn. This one here is made with this Wool Ease Thick and Quick. The color is called Hudson Bay. And I absolutely love the way this one turned out. For our demonstration today, I'm going to use this Wool Ease Thick and Quick. And the name of this one is called Spice Market. And I really love the colors in this one as well. And I'm real excited to see how this one's going to turn out. You're going to need about 8 ounces of a bulky number 6 yarn. You can use the velvet yarns if it's a bulky number six. You can use solids, whatever you want, as long as it's a bulky number six. Now, what if you want to make this big chunky pumpkin and you don't have a bulky number six? One of the ones that works really well is to use three strands of your medium weight number four yarn held together and you get about the same size pumpkin. And you can mix and match your colors for lots of fun. All right, so that's another option if you don't have a bulky number six weight yarn. So you need about eight ounces of your bulky number six yarns. We're gonna be stitching today with an N hook and the N hook we're using is a 9.00 millimeter crochet hook. And I know that some of them are a 10 millimeter, but I really prefer the nine for this so we can get our stitches just a little bit tighter. You're going to need a needle that has a huge eye in it for weaving in those ends. You're going to need a stick and I went out in my yard and just found a stick off one of my trees and I actually broke it in half. It was long to use for these. Okay, so the stick I have, it's about eight to nine inches long and it's about an inch and a half around and that's about the size you're going to need to make the stem for our pumpkin. Okay? You're also going to need a pair of scissors and then you're also going to need about six ounces of some polyfill. Now, when you buy a bag of polyfill, it's usually about 12 ounces in the bag. So if you buy just your regular 12 ounce size polyfill bag at say Hobby Lobby or Walmart or Joann's or Michael's, you can get two pumpkins out of it just so and it also depends on how tightly you stuff your pumpkin i like these pr stuffed pretty tightly some of my other like doll babies and things i don't stuff those as tightly but i want this to be nice and firm and so you're going to need about six ounces of your polyester fiber fill we're going to be starting with the top of our pumpkin and we're going to work down and then we'll gather the bottom closed after we stuff our pumpkin. All right, so we're going to begin with our slip knot. And I want you to start with a little bit of a tail, about six or eight inches, and we're going to use that when we secure the stick into our pumpkin. So we wanna have a little bit longer of a tail than we normally have. We're going to chain six. We're going to join this into a circle. So we'll take that tail of yarn and put it over our hook and pull that through. 
and then we'll make a little stay knot and that's going to keep our chain six into a nice loop all right <clears throat> we'll put our hook in pull up a loop and chain three and now we're going to stitch 11 double crochets yarn over go in pull up a loop yarn over go through the first two loops looks like I got a little bit of a split there there we go and then yarn over and go through your last two loops I am going to be stitching over my tail of yarn when I stitch these double crochets All right, let's see how many double crochets I have stitched. Our chain three counted as our first, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So our chain three counted as our first double crochet and then we stitched 11 more double crochets. We're going to join to the top of that chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. Now normally when I do this type of a beginning, I'll go ahead and take this piece of yarn and gather that closed. We don't wanna do this yet because we wanna do this at the end when we add our stem in and then we'll use this to help secure the stem okay so we're just going to leave that there and that's row one 12 double crochets join with our chain three and chain three for row two we're going to be placing two double crochets in each of those 12 double crochets around our chain three here counts as our first and so we'll double crochet in that same stitch as that chain three and then we'll stitch two double crochets in each of these double crochets around. So I'm going to continue working around, stitching two double crochets in each of my double crochets around, and then I'll join back to my chain three. I've stitched two double crochets in each of the double crochets around, so I have 24 double crochets. I'm going to join to that chain three with a slip stitch and chain three and for row three we're going to repeat what we did for row two we're going to stitch two double crochets in each of those double crochets around so again our chain three counts as our first so we'll stitch a double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three and then two double crochets in each of the double crochets around And I'm already loving the way this yarn is stitching up. And so, just like row two, we're stitching two double crochets in each of our double crochets around we'll join back to our chain three again I have stitched two double crochets in each of my stitches around so I now have 48 
double crochets. We're going to join to the top of that chain three, and again, we're going to chain three. All right, now this row is where we're going to begin those front post double crochet stitches that will give us those lines that go down the sides of our pumpkin. And so what we're going to do is we're going to stitch a double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three. We'll stitch one double crochet in the next stitch. And then the next stitch, we're going to stitch a front post double crochet. So yarn over, and the post of the stitch is down here. Normally we stitch up here, but we're going to go around that post of our double crochet and stitch our double crochet. All right, so now we'll go to the next stitch. We'll stitch two double crochets in the next stitch. One, two, there we go one double crochet in the next and then front post double crochet in the next now make sure that you have those two double crochets in between your front post that's where we can get off sometimes on our count we don't want to do that all right so we'll have a front post we'll have two double crochets in our next stitch one double crochet in the next and then front post so i'll go to my next stitch and stitch two double crochets one two one double crochet in the next and then there's my two stitches and then front post in the next stitch and so what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this working all the way around the top of our pumpkin here on row four. So we'll go to our next stitch and stitch two double crochets in the next double crochet, one double crochet in the next, and then front post double crochet in the next stitch and repeat working all the way around for row four. And make sure when you're placing your front post that you have those two stitches in between in order to keep everything even. Two double crochets in the next stitch. One double crochet in the next and front post double crochet in the next stitch. And we'll repeat this working all the way around and join back to our chain three. I have completed row four. We have three double crochets and a front post double crochet and repeat because we did two in the first and one in the next and then a front post. We end on our front post. We're going to join to that chain three and chain three. All right, now for row five, we're going to do it just a little bit similar. We have a chain three that counts as our double crochet. We're going to double crochet in the next stitch and then two double crochets in the next. So now we have four double crochets and then we're going to stitch a front post double crochet around that front post from the previous row. And so this is the way that row five is going to work. We're going to stitch one double crochet in the next two stitches, one and two. Then we'll stitch two double crochets in that next double crochet. 
and then we'll stitch a front post around the front post from the previous row. And so we're going to have four double crochets in a front post. All right, so one double crochet in the next two stitches. One, two, and then two double crochets in that last stitch in there so that we have four double crochets together and then a front post double crochet. And this is the way that row five will work. One double crochet in the next two, two double crochet in the next, and then a front post in the front post. And again, that's a double crochet. We're just putting it in a different place. And these front posts are going to give us those lines that move down the side of our pumpkin. I've completed row five. I have four double crochets between my front post stitches. We stitched one in the first two and two in the next, and then our front post stitch and repeat all the way around. We're going to join to our chain three and chain three. And now for row six, we're just going to place one double crochet in each of those four stitches. And of course, our chain three counts is our first here. There we go. So we have four double crochets and then we'll stitch our front post double crochet around that front post. All right, so this is our repeat for row six. One double crochet in the next four double crochets. And one front post double crochet around the front post double crochet. And again, we're going to repeat this all the way around our pumpkin and join back to our chain three. And I just have to say how much I am loving how this yarn is turning out for this pumpkin. Lots of beautiful colors and the soft, chunky yarn. All right, so one double crochet in each of those four, front post double crochet in the front post double crochet, repeat all the way around, and then join back to our chain three. I have completed row six. I've joined back to my chain three, and you can see the lines where the pumpkin has the lines from the front post double crochet. And so what we're going to do is we're going to repeat row six eight more times. You'll stitch one double crochet in those four double crochets and then front post double crochet and repeat, join to our chain three and chain three and repeat row six eight more times. And that's going to bring the body of your pumpkin down. So we're going to repeat row six eight more times. This is how your pumpkin should look when you've repeated eight more times row six, and this is going to bring us to row 14. And you can see those lines distinctly for the sides of the pumpkin. I joined to my chain three and chained three. Now, for row 15, we're going to be doing decreases. All right, so I'm going to bring my camera in just a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. And so for row 15, we're going to be stitching one double crochet in the next three and then stitch the next two together doing a double crochet decrease. So our chain three counts is our first. So we're going to stitch a double crochet in the next two stitches. Then we'll stitch the next two together. So we'll yarn over and we'll go in and pull up a loop. Then we'll go in the next stitch and pull up a loop. And you'll have four loops on your hook instead of the normal three. 
yarn over and go through the first three, yarn over and go through the last two. And so what we've done is we've decreased by a stitch. We aren't going to be doing any front post stitches anymore. All right, so one double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three. Then we'll stitch a double crochet decrease or stitching the next two together. Yarn over, go in and pull up a loop. Then we'll go in the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first three, yarn over and go through the last two. And then we'll repeat. One double crochet in the next three. and double crochet, decrease, or stitching the next two together. And this is going to bring the bottom of our pumpkin in just a little bit to make it a little bit easier for us to gather at the bottom. All right, so just to repeat, one double crochet in the next three. Whoops, there we go and then stitch the next two together in a double crochet decrease. And we'll repeat this all the way around and join back to our chain three. I completed row 15, stitching one double crochet in the next three and then stitching our double crochet decrease, our stitching two double crochets together and repeat all the way around I joined to my chain three and chained three. Now, this last row, we're just going to stitch one double crochet in each of those stitches around. No decreases, no front posts, just one double crochet in each of the double crochets around. And this is going to give us a row to do our gathering in so we can stuff our pumpkin for our holiday decorations. All right, so just to repeat, one double crochet in each stitch around, working all the way around, and then we'll join back to our chain three. I completed that last row of stitching one double crochet in each double crochet around. Now we're going to cut our yarn and you're going to need about 18 inches of yarn for gathering close the top of our pumpkin or actually this is the bottom of our pumpkin. All right so we'll go ahead and pull that through but before we gather that close we need to stuff our pumpkin. <laughs> so I've got my stuffing here and I'm just going to stuff it in there. And again, it's up to you how much stuffing you want to use. I like to use about six ounces because it makes a nice, tight, and sturdy pumpkin. All right, now don't worry about shaping it or anything just yet. All we're going to worry about right now is closing up the end of our pumpkin or the bottom of our pumpkin. All right, now you can use your needle if you have one where the eye is big enough. If you don't, you can use your crochet hook and feed it through. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go along the top edge, just go in and out of those stitches on the top and gather it closed, working all the way around. And I like to pull it as I go push the stuffing in and I just do every other stitch and I do about you know eight or ten stitches at once and then give it a good pull and you can go underneath here if that's easier for you just make sure you're right along that top edge And 
and you just keep going all the way around gathering that in because nobody wants the stuffing coming out of the bottom of their pumpkin And again, I know I've already said that, but I am absolutely loving this particular color of yarn. I believe I said it was called Spice Market. I'll check it again in a minute. All right, so I've, I've got it tightly. I'm going to make a couple more stitches like this. Give it a really nice tight pull. And then I'm going to go across just like this. And then I'll do the same thing this way. Because we do not want the bottom of our pumpkin to come undone. And we just keep going until we're happy and satisfied that it's closed. And again, it doesn't have to be perfectly beautiful because this is the bottom. All right. And so what I like to do is just go around again. Make sure everything's going to stay put. And you're just stitching around making sure there isn't any gaping or places that you know you're just not happy with all right I'm going to give it a good hard pull now I'm not going to be tying a knot um, I'm going to just be going inside the yarn after I've weaved in quite a bit but if you want to tie a knot you can and if you're uncomfortable and worried that it's not going to stay you can add a little dab of fray check or fabric glue and if it's going to be inside your house and not outside in the elements you can use some hot glue all right I feel like this is nice and snug so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna poke my needle in I'm gonna swirl it around in that stuffing and just pull it out to the side like that and clip my yarn so now the bottom of my pumpkin is done. Now we need to do the top. To finish off my pumpkin, I need to add the stem. And so that's why we didn't want to close this hole. And somehow I have lost the string. I stuffed it in there. And that's okay because we can just grab another piece of string to work with. All right. So. I'm going to thread that piece of yarn and if your tail you can find it you can use that if not just get you another piece of yarn about 10 or 12 inches it doesn't matter all right then we'll just take our stick I want this part out I kind of like that and we'll just gently kind of move it around in that stuffing so that it's you know about halfway down in and then we'll just take this and we'll go around the top row of those stitches. I threaded it on my needle. And again, if you can find that tail of yarn, that's even better. But if you can't, this will work just fine. All right, then we're just gonna take that and tie that up. Again, if you wanna add a little bit of fray check or fabric glue or hot glue if it's going to stay inside you can do that as well i'm going to take my hook and grab that and just pull it to the inside down inside that stuffing all right so there's my stick and i kind of like that end i think it's kind of fun and you want your stick to be about halfway down in your pumpkin and you don't ever want to use this to, to move your pumpkin around don't pick your pumpkin up by this pick it up by this all right so the last little touch I want to add is a bow so I cut off two strands of yarn they're probably about 24 inches and I'm just going to take my hook and go through a couple of these stitches on that first row and pull that bow through or that yarn through there we go and now we're just gonna make a bow I'm gonna tie it first that way I know it's not going to go anywhere. And then I'm going to make a nice bow. Now the size of the bow is, of course, up to you. There we go. And you can use other yarns if you want. You can use raffia or 
um, jute or whatever you like and then I just want to trim up my ends there we go I like using the matching yarn just because I think it's cute and I love how this yarn actually turned out isn't that gorgeous these are gonna go down on my step in my entryway mm -hmm. 